Can scoliosis cause back pain? When patients are diagnosed with scoliosis, the most common question they ask is if they're not feeling pain, is that can scoliosis cause pain as I continue to age? Or if they're an adult and they're feeling pain, they can say, is my scoliosis the cause of my pain? And the first thing we have to understand is really what is scoliosis? Scoliosis is an unnatural sideways curvature of the spine. There's a rotational component that actually makes the spine twist and the spine also bends. It's this bend and twist is what makes scoliosis scoliosis. If you don't have the twist and you don't have a bend, it's not scoliosis. You gotta have both things happening. The Cobb angle measurement for it to be actually measured as scoliosis needs to be 10 degrees or greater. And curves are actually measured in terms of severity based upon the size of Cobb angle. A Cobb angle is a measurement that's taken during an x-ray that actually classifies the condition in terms of its severity, but in terms of mild, moderate, severe, or very severe. Now, these classifications are relative to surgical intervention. They're not relative to whether the condition or the scoliosis may cause a problem. So personally, I don't like these classifications too much because it insinuates that if you have a mild scoliosis, that it's a it's not going to cause any problems, and that's not necessarily true, which we're going to soon learn. Mild curves are curves that are anything that's 25 degrees or less. And in the mild cases, the orthopedic treatment is pretty much nothing. They just say, watch and wait. If you're feeling pain, it's pain treatment, but nothing for the curve itself. Moderate curves are classified anywhere between 25 and 40 degrees. And then in this case, they're typically watching and waiting again. However, if you're an adolescent during rapid growth, the orthopedic treatment may be a brace to try to slow down progression but again, nothing to try to stop, to reduce the curve or make the curve smaller. And then when you start getting severe or very severe is when you start breaking 40 to 45 degrees. And at this stage is when they start considering surgery where they put rods and screws in the spine to try to stop the curve from progressing any further and actually try to reduce the size of curve. So it's not until you hit this severe stage is when they're willing to try to treat the scoliosis with something called spinal fusion. But because spinal fusion is so invasive, you have to wait for the curve to become a certain level of severity for this intervention to be reasonable because there's so much risk involved with spinal fusion. That's the reason why I don't like these classifications because they're relative to this type of risky treatment. However, if we had a treatment model that could help reduce curves when they're smaller, it would make sense that you would treat curves smaller because smaller curves, we know, are less likely to cause problems. The higher your Cobb angle becomes, the more misaligned your spine becomes, the more likely it is to cause symptoms and pain as a result of the scoliosis. So a smaller angle is always better. However, if the only way to reduce your Cobb angle is through serious risky rod or spinal fusion surgery, which could alter your entire life, by no means you wanna do that on a 10 or 15 or 20 degree curve. You have to wait for that severity to occur. So how can scoliosis literally cause back pain? Well, we know scoliosis can have a wide variety of symptoms and one of them is pain. The good news is that scoliosis isn't commonly associated to be painful in children as the curve is developing and mostly in adolescents. And that's because when the curve is developing during in children and most likely progressing in adolescent stages, it's happening because the, 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 the patient is actually growing and developing. And this growth and this development leads to an elongation. And then elongation can cause this curve to progress, but since there's no compression, the patient feels no pain. The main symptom in scoliosis in, chil in children and adolescents isn't pain, but postural deviation. And it's not related to the size of curve, meaning the largest curve I've ever seen in the child has been 155 degrees, which is a very severe scoliosis. And that child had no pain, no discomfort, no outward symptoms as a result of the scoliosis. Unfortunately, the opposite is true for adult patients. In adult patients, the most common symptom or the most common reason why adults seek out treatment is because of pain. And because in the adult scenario, the condition becomes compressive, meaning as you stop growing and you move into the adult form, curves unfortunately still progress. Even though a lot of patients these days are told not to worry about it as in the adult stage, which is not my recommendation, because we know in the adult stage, the curve progresses and it progresses as a result of gravity over time. Gravity is pushing down the spine, causing this slow but steady progression. 
how much a curve progresses in the adult stage is directly related to the size of curve, meaning a 50 degree curve will progress faster than a 40, and a 40 faster than a 30, and a 30 faster than a 20, and so forth. So the smaller the curve you have in the adult form, the better off you are. And it goes back to what I was saying earlier that if we had a way of treating small curves and keeping them small or even making them smaller, it would benefit you as the in the adult stage because a smaller curve is less likely to create problems and it's also going to progress slower. But since there's no real good treatment option orthopedically to treat small curves, it's more of like a watch and wait thing, these small curves progress in the adult stage and now they start causing problems. They can start causing pain, they start causing dis discomfort because this upward motion that happens during growth counteracts compression. But in the adult stage, since you're no longer growing, the spine is settling and it's now compressing as a result due to gravity. And the fact that you are, have a scoliosis and you have a curvature predisposes you to have back pain and back problems as a result of your scoliosis. And unfortunately, the number one recommendation that's given to adults as they go from adolescent into the adult stage with scoliosis is not to worry about it, to see what happens. And if it becomes worse, we'll worry about it. But unfortunately, as your spine gets worse as an adult, we start losing treatment options because the availability of treatment options as your spine gets, as your curve gets bigger and as you get older, it becomes much more difficult to treat. So there's really no benefit on letting your, your spine continue to compress and cause more problems. Our recommendation is that you treat the curve as early and as small as possible. Now, how does this compression actually lead to pain? Well, compression, the spine is actually dealt, is actually built to deal with compression. It's normally dealt to deal with uneven pressure. But what happens when there's scoliosis occur is that this compression or this uneven pressure becomes ex exacerbated due to the curvatures. And these unnatural spinal curvatures expose the spine and the surrounding tissues to this to creating compression of the nerves, the discs, the muscles, and the surrounding areas, which can unfortunately lead to pain. It's kind of like an underlying car. It's more prone to have damage as a result of driving on the road than a car that's perfectly aligned. And as a result, the curve can start leading to pain. It's not really relative to how big your curve is in total. It's more relative to how much your curve progressed as an adult. For example, you can progress 50 degrees as a child, feel no pain. And then that same person can progress five degrees as an adult and that five degrees will be painful. And now you have, a, that means you have a 55 degree curve. Well, somebody else may progress 20 degrees as a child, have no pain, progress five degrees as an adult or 10 degrees as an adult and now have 30 degrees and can feel and can have more pain than the person who actually has a 55 degree curve that only progressed five. So it's the progression as an adult that leads to pain. Now, what does scoliosis back pain feel like? Well, scoliosis back pain it, it normally can normally lead to radicular pain or nerve pain as a result of compression. So you can have pain most commonly is going to be in the low back going down into the legs. But if you have a thoracic scoliosis, it could be in your mid back, or it could be going down into your arms, it could be up in your neck, but it's normally at the site of curvature radiating into the extremities at the nerves that can be affected. It can also lead to muscle pain right at the site of curvature because of the muscle imbalances that are that are existing there. The muscles are contracting not because the muscles are causing scoliosis. The muscles are contracting trying to support the unnatural curvatures that exist in the scoliotic spine. Also, scoliosis back pain, back pain can be a result of stiffness as the spine curve begins to increase and as you begin to get older, there becomes an unnatural stiffness in the area because the body is trying to slow down that progression. And that stiffness prevents the natural osmosis inhibition, meaning it prevents the natural fluids from exchange that occurs to keep the joints healthy in the spine, particularly the discs, ligaments, and joint tissues. This can lead to a point of uh, stiffness in those areas. And it's very commonly described as that they're being pulled or they're fatiguing um, over time or over as the day continues and their endurance to support their body becomes less and less. So back pain isn't common for children and adolescent with scoliosis, but unfortunately it's the main symptom in adult scoliosis and the main reason why adults seek treatment. The best strategy for scoliosis related pain is not really to treat the pain because the pain is a result of the scoliosis. 
the best way to treat scoliosis pain is actually to reduce the scoliosis. And the best way to reduce the scoliosis is to be as proactive as possible. Meaning if you have scoliosis, the worst thing I ever always think is watching and waiting to see what happens because more than likely you're gonna watch and wait to see your curve progress. The reason why that's recommended orthopedically because the only treatment the option they have is very invasive. However, if you have natural conservative treatments that can help strengthen the body and work within the body's limits, it definitely makes sense to treat curves small and to treat them using multiple modalities to get the very best um, reduction and management of your scoliosis over your entire life. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.